Welcome to Wichita Liberty TV with Bob Weeks. On this week's special episode of Wichita Liberty TV, we take a detailed look at the many cases of corruption, rent-seeking, and cronyism in Wichita with an additional presentation from Learn Liberty. As always, find us on KGPT26, online at kgpt26.com, and get more at wichitaliberty.org. Is there a problem in Wichita? It's a matter of some controversy, so I'd like to take you through a few recent episodes in Wichita political and governmental history and let you decide for yourself. The incidents themselves are troubling. But so too is the city's response. And as the city prepares to ask its residents to approve a higher sales tax, it's important that we understand the way Wichita city government has been managed. Let's start by taking a look at campaign contributions. Here is city council member James Clendenin along with his campaign finance report filed for the year 2012. And you can see names and addresses and the occupations of people. Here is a similar report for City Council Member Lavonda Williams, again for the calendar year 2012. So, who are these people that appear on these campaign finance reports? I did some investigation and here's what I found. And these figures are just for campaign contributions made during calendar year 2012. That was the year before both James Clendenin and Levanta Williams ran for re-election to their present seats in February 2013. As you can see, James Clendenin received slightly over $8,000 in contributions in 2012. $3,000 of that came from people affiliated with Key Construction Company. The other $5,000 came from people affiliated with movie theater owner Bill Warren. For Lavana Williams, in 2012 she received $4,000 in contributions, all from people affiliated with Key Construction, specifically its executives and their spouses. Is this a problem? Both candidates received additional contributions in 2013 from others, but for an entire year, contributions to their campaigns came from only two sources. And these two sources of campaign contributions will play a role later on in this presentation. Let's look at tangled relationships. Have you ever thought it might be convenient that when you're at the local movie theater, you might also be able to pick up some barbecue sauce? Well, in Wichita, you can do that. Mayor Carl Brewer manufactures barbecue sauce. It's called Brewer's Best, and you can buy it at more than one Warren movie theater. So, is that a problem? Well, in the past, Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer had voted for a tax increment financing district that benefited Bill Warren and his partners to the tune of some $4 million. And when that theater was not performing well, the mayor voted for a bailout of the TIF district that cost Wichita taxpayers an estimated $1.2 million. Then, the mayor voted for tax breaks for the new Warren IMAX theater. Now, that's a lot of expense. But... Buying the mayor's barbecue sauce at the Warren Theater? Now, that's priceless. What about the city's contracting process? Here's a picture of David Wells. He's president of Key Construction. You may remember that company's executives and their spouses were heavily involved in making campaign contributions to Wichita City Council members James Clendenin and Levana Williams. And next to him is Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer. These two are obviously on some sort of fishing excursion, and they're catching some pretty big fish. So is that a problem? Well, a few years ago, when the city was going to build the garage that primarily serves the Ambassador Hotel, we call it the Block One Garage now, the initial plan that the mayor supported was to give Key Construction Company a no-bid contract to build the garage for $6 million. Now, do I need to remind you that the president of Key Construction is the guy next to the mayor and the fish? But then, City Council member Michael O'Donnell objected to the no-bid contract, and the city decided to seek competitive bids for the garage. The winning competitive bid was for $1.3 million less than the original $6 million cost of the garage. That's great for taxpayers, and thank you, Michael O'Donnell. But here's the kicker. The winner of that contract was Key Construction, you know, the company whose president goes on fishing excursions with the mayor. 
the same company that submitted a no-bid contract for $6 million was willing to build it later for $4.7 million. Now, the Ambassador Hotel received many millions in other forms of subsidy, much of it approved by the City Council under Mayor Brewer's leadership. And I understand that many people believe these economic development incentives are necessary and good. But overpaying for public infrastructure through a no-bid contract given to the mayor's fishing buddy? And most city council members approved of that. So we've had a problem with no-bid contracts in Wichita. Since then, the city manager asked for and implemented some complex policies intended to reduce the problem. We'll have to see how well it works. But speaking of entangled relationships, in July 2012, when the outdoor retailer Cabela's was planning to build a store in Wichita, Mayor Brewer wrote a letter to Cabela's recommending Key Construction Company as the company that should be hired to build their store. Key Construction was the only company that the mayor wrote a letter of recommendation for. Then, later that month, this is July 2012, there was a dispute over the contract to build the new terminal at the Wichita Airport. Key Construction was one of two companies involved, and Key Construction's contract was more expensive than the other. The Wichita City Council was asked to rule on this matter as to which company, Key Construction or another, should receive the contract to build the airport. Now, even the Wichita Eagle Editorial Board noticed that appearance matters, and the Eagle Editorial Board noted that, unlike other cities and states, Wichita and Kansas lack pay-to-play rules. Would it surprise you to learn that the City Council decided that key construction companies should be awarded the contract to build the airport terminal? And in this picture, notice that not only is there a sign with the key construction company name, there is also another sign with the name Wallbridge, a key construction Wallbridge joint venture, it says. Well, shortly after that, we learned something that I thought was quite shocking. Remember, this was summer 2012. Wichita City Council member Jeff Longwell was running for the Sedgwick County Commission, and the primary election was in the first week of August. Not long after the City Council voted to give the airport construction contract to Key Construction, campaign finance reports were filed for the County Commission election. And in those filings, we learned that there were a number of people in Michigan that were quite interested in Jeff Longwell's political career. A little bit of investigation revealed that right before the vote on the airport terminal contract, Jeff Longwell received $1,000 in contributions from executives of Wallbridge. That's the Michigan Construction Company in a joint venture with Key Construction to build the Wichita Airport Terminal. And then just a few days after the vote, Longwell received thousands more in contributions from Wallbridge Associated Parties. Now when the Wichita Eagle asked Jeff Longwell about these contributions, he said, well, we often get contributions from a wide variety of sources, including out-of-town people. But I looked at 10 of the most recent campaign finance reports filed by Jeff Longwell at that time, and I found only three out-of-state contributions totaling $1,500. By the way, Wallbridge executives made no other contributions to any other city council members. None of them were running for election at the same time they were going to vote on a contract involving Wallbridge. This led me to conclude how to succeed in Wichita business if you're from Michigan. First, partner up with the local firm that's headed by the mayor's fishing buddy. Then, make contributions to the campaign of the only city council member who is running for office at the time. Then, have these guys judge your airport terminal contract appeal case. Well, not long after that, in February 2013, several speakers appeared at a Wichita City Council meeting. They mentioned votes made and actions taken by the council and the appearance of influence or linkage to campaign contributions. From his perch on the Wichita City Council bench, Jeff Longwell admonished them to take a different approach. Longwell, like most other city council members, does not believe there is a problem. What about Wichita City Manager Robert Layton? A few years ago, when a company needed Wichita City Council approval for a multi-million dollar sales tax bond project in Northeast Wichita, guess who that company selected to handle its public relations in Wichita? 
Well, the city manager's fiance, now his wife. A few days later, after the Wichita Eagle publicized this, she resigned that account. Well, something else. Last summer, you may remember that the city chose between two competing proposals to build the apartments on the west bank of the Arkansas River between Douglas and First Streets. There was a policy in the contract guarding against conflicts of interest. No member of the city's governing body shall participate in any decisions regarding the contract, it said. So, I connected a few dots. I noted that Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer is a member of the governing body that has power of approval over this project. I noted that movie theater owner Bill Warren, you may remember his name from all the campaign contributions and the failed TIF district that had to be bailed out. Well, he was one of the parties that owns the West Bank Apartments project. And Bill Warren also owns movie theaters. And Wichita Mayor Carl Brewer owns a company that manufactures barbecue sauce. And Brewer's sauce is sold at Warren's Theaters. And I asked at a Wichita City Council meeting, I asked, Mayor, do you sell your sauce at Warren's Theaters? He replied, yes. Then, no one, not any city council member, not the city manager, not the city attorney, not any city bureaucrat, thought this matter was worthy of further discussion. Oh, and by the way, Another party involved with Warren on the apartment project was Key Construction. Yeah, the company headed by the mayor's fishing buddy. Can it get any worse? Well, now cronyism in Wichita has been raised to new heights. Last November, Wayne Chambers appeared before the Wichita City Council. He had just been named incoming chair of the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce. He is also chief executive officer of a company in Wichita called High Touch Technologies. And he wanted property and sales tax abatements to help pay for the renovation of their building in downtown Wichita. So he hinted that his company might expand in a city other than Wichita. And the Wichita City Council granted property and sales tax exemptions. This led me to observe a new definition for hootspot what you usually think of as unmitigated effrontery or imprudence or gall. But now, a new definition is the spectacle of the incoming chair of a city's chamber of commerce threatening to move his company out of the city unless the company receives incentives. I ask you, is there a problem in Wichita? Mayor Brewer says no. In a city council meeting, he told me and another person that it's only a small group of people who make the allegations of cronyism. That's probably true, and I think that points to a problem. If the mayor thinks there's no cronyism in Wichita, and his city council members generally agree with that, I think these people are very isolated. Cloistered, I would say. The mayor and council members are surrounded by people who work for them. That would be people like the city manager, the city legal staff, the economic development staff. Based upon my observations, these bureaucrats don't seem to be giving very good advice to the mayor and council. Then, of course, there are the cronies, the crony capitalists themselves. These are the people who want something from the city, like an overpriced no-bid construction contract, maybe a tax increment and financing district, tax exemptions, forgivable loans, or sometimes just grants of cash. Do you think that they will be honest with the mayor and council members and advise them of the harm of cronyism? Not likely, I'd say. They profit from this mutually parasitic relationship. But when the people of Wichita are given an opportunity to vote on a specific example of an economic development incentive that many viewed as cronyism, the people voted it down. That was the case in the overturn of the ordinance in 2012 that granted special treatment to the Ambassador Hotel in downtown Wichita. Besides common decency, we do have a law in Wichita. We have a city code that says council members shall refrain from making decisions involving business associates, customers, clients, friends, and competitors. And has this law been violated? I think I've showed you multiple instances where this law has been violated, blatantly violated. Why is this law not enforced? Well, a related question is, who has standing to enforce this law? Last summer, I and another person consulted with lawyers. They researched, and in their opinion, 
based on their research of the law, citizens like you and I do not have standing to bring legal action under this law. In fact, it is not quite clear who has standing to ask that this law be enforced. Certainly, I think the city attorney could. But as you can see, here we have a law that says, council members shall refrain from making decisions involving friends. We have a mayor. We have a man who wants a city contract. We have a couple of big fish. And the mayor votes to give the man with the fish an overpriced no-bid contract. City Hall says, this is not a problem. Santa Ana, California has an ordinance that says a council member shall not participate in nor use his or her official position to influence a decision of the city council if it is reasonably foreseeable that the decision will have a material financial effect apart from the, its effect on the public generally or a significant portion thereof on a recent major campaign contributor. This is an example of a pay-to-play law. It could probably be written even more simply, such as, Council members may not vote to enrich their campaign contributors. That seems like a pretty simple ethical code, doesn't it? But Wichita City Council members say this law is not needed. Some have even said that it would be bad for the city. While all this was happening, Wichita has been in decline. I've shown charts of the Wichita economy and how it is not performing well. My conclusions were mostly dismissed until recently when the Wichita Metro Chamber of Commerce looked at the data and came to the same conclusion. At one time, Wichita's per capita income was higher than the national average. That's not the case now, and the trend is negative for Wichita. We've also been told that Wichita's physical plant is in decline. A report this year found that the cost to bring existing deficient infrastructure up to standards is given as an additional 45 to 55 million dollars per year over what the city already spends. It's thought that a one cent per dollar increase in the sales tax will bring in about 80 million dollars per year. So the spending that we need to bring existing deficient infrastructure up to standards would consume over half that. It would be one thing if the mayor, city council, and city hall bureaucrats recognize that reform is needed. But by and large, they are mostly pleased with their leadership. They believe that their stewardship has earned your trust and that you should give them millions more each year to spend on your behalf. Wall Street occupiers complain that corporate power is out of control in America. They say corporations are in bed with the federal government. America suffers from rampant, runaway corporatism and crony capitalism. So how can we fix this problem? How can we make the economic playing field more fair? Well, it's tempting to think there's an easy solution. All we need to do is increase the government's power to control and police corporations and the economy. The thinking is that government, unlike corporations, is accountable to the people. But that solution might be the very thing causing the problem. When you give government the power to pick winners and losers in the economy, the rich and well-connected will be the winners. Here are two reasons why. First, the power to regulate the economy is the same thing as the power to distribute favors. This is because when government agencies have the power to regulate industries, grant subsidies, or otherwise control the rules of the economic game, their decisions have huge financial repercussions on the groups involved. So corporations have a massive incentive to try to influence how that power gets used. The more the corporation has at stake, the more it will spend to gain control through lobbying, campaign contributions, political appointments, and other means. Pick any sector, finance, agriculture, healthcare, automotive manufacturing, or countless others. You can bet that the regulations currently in place were influenced by, sometimes even partially written by, one or more of the corporations they regulate. Second, regulations hurt small businesses more than they hurt big businesses. So more regulations means we end up with more big businesses. And this isn't just because of the lobbying big businesses do. 
Simply reading and understanding the regulations that apply to your industry, let alone completing the complicated paperwork, reports, new equipment purchases, and infrastructure updates takes a lot of staff time and money. Large, established companies can more easily hire staff to focus solely on compliance and pay for necessary upgrades and other costs, while many small businesses can't afford to do any of these things, meaning they have to close, they limit expansion, or they never start up in the first place. The Small Business Administration, a government agency, estimates that it costs a small business with 20 or fewer employees around 40% more than to comply with government regulations than it costs a large company with 500 or more employees. So, extensive government regulation by its very nature encourages the success of larger and larger companies while hurting existing small businesses and discouraging the start of new ones. These are just a couple of the ways in which the current collusion between corporations and government is a result of government power. It may seem paradoxical, but if we reduce government power over the economy, then corporations will have less power to compete for, fewer privileges to seek, fewer subsidies to enjoy, and no agencies to capture. There will be a more level playing field for large and small firms alike. Cronyism and corporatism are like runaway fires. In important ways, government power over the market just throws more fuel on the fire. If we want to kill the fire, we need to cut the fuel. Still have questions? Try clicking on one of our other videos.